So you asked me if there was going to be a revolution? Um, I think there's already a revolution happening. We're seeing it everywhere. Honestly, I feel like blockchain is almost slipping through the cracks. They don't even see that we're a threat yet. If you have a decentralized entity that people can opt into, that starts performing services that the government used to provide, then what do you need these guys for? Bitcoin is the first real experiment in DAOs. It's the first DAO that ever existed. Uh, what's a DAO? Uh, I mean, Decentralized Autonomous Organization is what it stands for, right? Basically, a Decentralized Autonomous Organization is an organization in which you can interact with it without having to go through an intermediary. I think that's very important for us to have tools that are really censorship resistant. We have evolved so much as a society, but yet our governance structures are hundreds of years old. We had a long period of monarchies, right? And that was a very centralized form of governance. And we had a great evolution with democracies, right? Spreading that power a bit more. Now, I would argue that corporations are superseding nation states in terms of their power. You're a digital serf right now, living on Facebook. You work the land, you work the, the, the feed, and they take all the benefit. They take all of the value, right? It's a free service where you are the product. Systems tend to perpetuate themselves. In other words, capitalism tends to do what's best for the market. Maybe not what is best for all the individuals who comprise the market. Silicon Valley, they tend to fund projects or companies that are trying to solve very much first world problems. How do you get your food five minutes quicker? How do you get your Uber two minutes faster? Whereas with blockchain technology, we have the ability to fund initiatives that will produce true social good and provide value to the most undervalued parts of humanity. This is the most egalitarian way to construct systems. The culture is moving faster than the nation state can handle, right? We can have that same personal feeling that I have with my neighbor with the people in a chat room. Traditional government institutions take tremendously long time to fail, and when they do fail, there's usually violence, so we try not to let them fail. But today, we are in the first time in history that we can actually try out new governance models without the need of people getting killed, because we can try those governance models from the comfort of our sofa. In the mathematical realm, you cannot thread an algorithm with a gun. Because it's unstoppable. It's open source code. The cat's out of the bag right away when someone has the idea. Anything closed source is like saying, I'm a scientist and I've proved something, but I'm not going to show you how I proved it. It's just free. You download it from the internet. It's open source. You want to enhance it, you do. And if you don't like it, you can just fork it. And if we have means by which groups can connect to each other to form larger governance structures that govern the entire whole, then we have something that kind of is resembling a fractal structure. If you think about kind of other examples of superorganisms, you know, like beehives and ant colonies, or even just the human body itself is a bunch of cells and microorganisms that are all working together in, in a, a single like human body as their environment. But now what we have proliferating with crypto networks is actually these supranational protocols in which human activity can be governed on this international basis without nation states, without corporations. So what it allows is for people to come together from wherever and they can interact together, they can make decisions, they can share in the common enterprise, and then they can all benefit together. Governance ends up being a really key part of making that work. And if you view blockchains from an evolutionary standpoint, this may be the most critical feature one could imagine. Any organization of any kind, from your mom and pop shop to your decentralized autonomous organization, can create an entity on Aragon's network and use it um, for all kinds of things, like their cap table, like payroll, to show you know where their finances are going, for voting, for upgrades, to the way in which that organization works. Aragon is a tool that I think will spawn many different early attempts at decentralized governance structures, which, if implemented well, will be powerful. Uh, it's actually two components. So the first one is the Aragon platform to build and govern organizations, societies, and protocols. And the other part is the first digital jurisdiction that has ever existed, uh, the Aragon Network. That doesn't happen very often in the real world. It's
it's rare that you get to set up a new central bank or a new government. So I think we're going to be in sort of this Cambrian explosion of experimentation on both of those fronts. But with any huge transition that happens in human history, they are very insistent in making us believe that we need them. So the incumbents are trying to use their marketing power, their communication power, their surveillance power to convince people that they still need them. But the market and the people will eventually figure out that they don't. And that will be the end of the establishment.